The Chicago Bulls have made it through 25 games thus far in this season. And now making it through those 25 games on today's episode, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly so far through the first 25 games for your Chicago Bulls, and then provide you with an update on some of the players. Y'all know we're going to talk about it all, break it down, but you know you got to hear the music first. Come yeah. Shy Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's daily episode. If you're tuned in with me, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell as well. Now, before we get into the good, the bad, the ugly, ladies and gentlemen, we got an update on Patrick Williams. My man is looking like he's going to return to basketball Friday for the Chicago Bulls when they face off versus the Hornets, and then. We did got a little, we have a little injury scare with Josh Giddy. Uh, the Chicago Bulls held a scrimmage to where they said it wasn't a long session, but the guys ran pretty hard. And Josh Giddy during that scrimmage had to leave the scrimmage early due to a little bit of back pain. So we'll see what happens with that situation. You already know, we'll keep you updated as the information comes in. Now, should we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly first? We need some some good to talk about in Chicago, so we'll start off with the good. <laughs> we'll start off with the good. Now, the good thing that I've been seeing from the Chicago Bulls through the first 25 games, you know what I'm saying? Even though I understood what I was look, going to be expecting coming into this season, to just simply put it, my expectations wasn't that high for the Chicago Bulls. So there are going to be some things that people are like, how can you absolutely see it? See that as a good thing? It's okay. These are my things. If you agree with them, cool. If not, cool as well. Let me know why down in the comment box. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Chicago Bulls offense. The good thing is the offense looks pretty good when it's, when it's actually working. Now, don't get me wrong. The Chicago Bulls do go through their scoring droughts more so than what we would like, but that's what comes with a young team with a bunch of young guys and guys that are trying to prove it out there in this NBA trying to make a way. But the Chicago Bulls offense right now, they are 11th in offensive rating, 5th in three-point shooting percentage as a team, ninth in field goal percentage, 13th in rebounds, and 4th in assists. Can't be too mad at that for a team who – was damn near at the bottom the last three years in offensive rating and just about every other offensive category, probably minus rebounding, if I remember correctly. But everything else, it wasn't really that good for the Chicago Bulls. Three-point attempts weren't. Three-point percentage wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Probably the field goal percentage was kind of up there because we knew what the kind of guys that we had around. But overall, the offense... It wasn't as good as this offense can potentially be or and has been through the first 25 games for the Chicago Bulls. So you have to give some type of credit to the, the coaches on the squad and some credit to the players that have been playing, you know what I'm saying, through these first 25 games. Another good thing that I'm taking away from the first 25 games is that Montez Buzelis is one of those. Montez Buzelis is a guy, you know what I'm saying, I can, if we're going, if we're going, Call and throw shade and, and 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 throw shots at Billy Donovan. This is one of the times that we can absolutely do that. We're saying stop playing with Montez Buzelis minutes, bro. Stop playing with Montez Buzelis minutes, bro. How many times we gotta tell you? That's just exactly what we trying to tell you. Figure it out, man. Because Montez Buzelis has shown that he is a star in the making. It's gonna be absolutely up to him to make sure that he takes those steps forward and continually move up. But I see a lot of talent within this young fella. He's been with, with Billy Donovan and some of these injuries that have been taking place. I can give Billy Donovan credit. He has been playing Montez Buzelis. But once guys return, don't start playing them games again, Billy Donovan. Don't start playing them games again. This young fella needs every opportunity to continue to develop for the Chicago Bulls in their foreseeable future. Another thing that I'm seeing that's good is the vets are bowling. Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic, my goodness. 
can we can we keep it a buck? These guys look like they campaigning for an all-star appearance. Not even going to hold you. I'm talking about hella efficient for both of these guys. The three-point shot is going down for them. The field goal percentage is good, and all the shots are going down for them. These guys have been professional as hell this entire season, and honestly, they've been the, one of the bright spots on the team. And you haven't heard anything coming out of the locker room that was negative uh, about it. You, you're not kind of seeing that bad body language. You know what I'm saying? That you were seeing the last few years with Vooch being frustrated a lot and Zach Levine saying, screw this. But I got to give it to the vets. They've been balling. Zach Levine got, a, I believe he has a strong case at an all star appearance. I know it. it hey, don't argue with me. Argue with your mama. Go look at the stats. It's okay. Another thing that I'm happy about is Daylon Terry. Daylon Terry, man, man, man. We knew he was a raw product coming into this. And there was times to where we were damn near banging our head on the desk like, DT, what we doing, bro? What are we doing, bro? You know what I'm saying? So, but after uh, receiving the name Crash Bandicoot from Kev, my man's kind of slowed down and it seemed like the game is coming to him. He seems like he's definitely going to embody one of those more specific 3 and D players that's kind of floating around, uh, pretty common around the NBA. And for what it's worth, he looks pretty damn good at it. He's been knocking down a three, you know what I'm saying, occasionally. I want to see I want to see him continually do that when he returns from injury. And he's been controlling the ball pretty well. The defense has been definitely up there with some of the best. Well, it ain't much best on the team. But if you talk about the best defenders on the team, he's definitely up there because the rest of the – it ain't too many good defenders on the Bulls right now if we keeping it a grant. But – I will say the last thing because I can go on and on with the good. One of the last things is that if anything was potentially out there to happen, the trade value of a lot of these guys are up right now. And I'm saying I know it's going to be pretty difficult to move Zach Levine, but that does not mean you can't move other players who might have easier money to move and still have some type of value to them. Just saying. Now let's get into the bad. The bad, the injuries, the injuries for the Chicago Bulls, they've been, you know what I'm saying? They've been there. And I'm not saying it's been a crazy injury bug that the Chicago Bulls have been trying to disinfect out of their locker room. But injuries to P. Will, that's something we know the history with them, but you don't want to continue to see it. Lonzo Ball, extremely happy for the guy that he's made it back. But I wish that we did not have to go through those few games or those few weeks with him out with the wrist injury. I wish my mans could have still just been steadily coming along, even though he is. I just do wish that he could have got those games that he missed under his belt, because I believe at this point, as good as he is right now, at this point, I think he could have. I think he can be more better, much better just with the reps. I think as 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 many reps for Lonzo Ball is better. So that's kind of bad. And then moving on to another bad, Josh Giddy. He's been mid, y'all. Not even going to hold you. I was one of those people that came in and I said, hey, I think Josh Giddy going to come in, go 16, 8 and 7. No, nah, he ain't at 16. He had 11. So and, and then the three-point shooting started off the season well. I think it was at like 36, 37%. Y'all check me down now. But um, it's down to 31% now. That's how bad he's been the last few weeks. And I'm not saying that he hasn't had his moment because he absolutely has had his moments. But it's too many times to where I'm scratching my head like, why did you attempt to make that pass? Josh Giddy, you're wide open. Please knock down three. Josh Giddy, you're 6'8". Can I see a little bit more physicality going to the basket? Just asking. You know what I'm saying? Just asking a little bit more physicality going to the basket. And why the hell have you not been closing a lot of games for the Chicago Bulls if you're our starting point guard? Now, understand just because you start, you don't necessarily have to end the game. But remember, I told you all, he's going to get held to a high standard by me simply because what the front office traded him for. A player straight up who was one of the ultimate Swiss Army Knights in the league. They told me with the trade that Alice Caruso and Josh Getty was an even comp. 
it ain't been even if we keeping it a buck. Josh Giddy has to be consistently better. And we talking about consistency. If you're going to be a 14 point, point points per game score, I need 14 just about every single night. Just about every single night. And if it's not going for you scoring wise, I need you to try on the defensive side. Because right now it is horrendous for Josh Giddy. Defense is so atrocious with Josh Giddy. We need more. We need better. We Dutch, we should, we not, we not finna sit here and act like just because, you know what I'm saying? He had a, a few good passing moments that is good enough for the development of him and where the Chicago Bulls need to be trending towards. That's the reality. He needs to be better and be more impactful. Be more impactful. I know he still has time. I'm going to allow him a little bit more time. But we need to get it going. That's all I'm pretty much saying with, with that situation. And then another bad thing is that the Bulls suck at home. Three and nine at home. You played 12 games at home and you lost. You only won three of them. You're wasting people's money. What we doing? You can't treat the home fans like that. You should be at your best. I, I, I respect, you know what I'm saying, a little bit more better work on the road, too. I can't be mad at that necessarily, but I could definitely be mad for how y'all treating y'all fans. Treating us. Be better at home. Now, another bad thing that kind of is the opposite of one of the good uh bullet points that i uh listed when it came to zach levine is that one of the bad things could be zach levine ain't drawing too much trade interest that could be viewed as a bad thing depending on how you look at the situation if the chicago bulls are still interested in moving zach levine no trade interest is bad for business if zach levine is still looking to be moved it doesn't appear to be that way but if we don't know what's in the man head. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But if Zach Levine doesn't want to be there, no trade interest is bad for business. So depending on how you look at the situation, it can either be a bad thing if you can't move him. But on the flip side, it could be a good thing because he's an all-star caliber player. He's not necessarily hurting the team. And hell, you might be stuck with him anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, eh, is it is it is it a good thing or a bad thing? Y'all, let me know. Is it good or bad? Uh, because y'all feel like you can go either way with it, depending on how you look in that the situation. Now, on to the last part: the ugly, the poo poo, the ugly things that we see watching these Chicago Bulls. You guys know what I'm gonna say first. We're all, it starts with the letter D and we're all going to say it at the same time. The ugly is the defense. The defense for the Chicago Bulls have been atrocious. It's been atrocious. Like, my goodness, the Chicago Bulls right now rank 27th in defensive rating. Guys, it's only 30 teams in the NBA. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that the Chicago Bulls should be 10th. Hell, not even 15th. But damn, 27th? Now, the offensive rating is one thing, and we can give kudos to that, and we can salute and say, yes, the offense looks better, but you ain't giving yourself many chances to win basketball games if you don't at least give effort on a defensive end. How many times in the last few weeks we seen the Chicago Bulls come out, start slow in the first quarter? Or if they start fast in the first quarter, it's a sloppy second quarter. Or if they start the first two quarters good, it's a horrible third quarter. And then we're fighting and clawing and we getting hyped up and then boom, you run out of gas. And the Chicago Bulls lose because of the atrocious defense they find themselves in situations that is not conducive to winning it does not help their cause at all so the defense has to be better this defense is allowing 119 points per game 
terrible. And I believe that these players can absolutely be better. I'm not saying good. I'm not saying great. I'm just saying better. If you show consistent effort, Josh Giddy, slide your damn feet. Zach Levine, more consistent play. Kobe White, more consistent play. I need my guys to step up because there's only so many Iodo Sumus. You're dealing with a Patrick Williams who is a solid defender, who con who's constantly missing, ga missing games right now. So it's only so many of those. And then you talk about Nikola Vucevic, who can be a, a good team defender, but it's not necessarily the best defender one-on-one -on -one or in certain situations. Then Jalen Smith, a little bit more athletic, but it's still like everybody got to move on that string. Everybody got to be talking, communicating, making sure that you know where you need to be and you be there. Do your job. That's the thing that comes down to it with these players. Do your job. That's it. And it's, it's, it's two sides to the flow. Two sides to the flow. Offense can look good. And it does on most of, on most of the time when y'all ain't tripping. Defense, good sometimes. More times horrible. Let's be more times good. Yeah, I understand. You sometimes you just get your ass kicked in certain games. It, it it happens in every sport. You just go out there, you get your ass kicked. But consistent effort is what we need. But uh, those that those that's what the ugly is. The ugly, the ugly is the defense. We need to we need to pretty this baby up. Do something else. Need a complete makeover, for real. And one of the ugly things, I'm sorry, but it, it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got to say it. Josh Giddy. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> that's the That's it, though. That's it, though. Y'all let me know, man. I'm just talking crazy right now, but y'all just let me know uh, whatever you feel like was missed when we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to the Chicago Bulls right now. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below. I appreciate y'all for tuning in to another episode. Make sure you always see red, and you already know I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for the show. Cognac. Gang.